This video is going to introduce simple linear regression, and like we've always been doing, we'll do this in R. Uh, simple linear regression is really just a fancy name for fit a line through, that next word is supposed to be, data. And here's a little picture. If you had two variables, two numeric variables, y and x, and you are going to try to predict y using the variable x, then you'd maybe have this cloud of data, hopefully through which a line might fit, and specifically here a line. Um, sometimes simple linear regression is called a uh, line of best fit or best fit line or some variation on those words. That phrase definitely hides some details, though once you understand the details, I'm happy if you go about using that line. I'm willing to let you go about using that phrase. I don't know if I'm happy about it. Uh, best here should really be in quotes because what it actually means is the values that maximize the likelihood function. So really all of this is going to come back to the method I've been forcing us through for uh, the duration of the semester, the likelihood. And the likelihood is defined relative to an assumed population distribution. So really, it's the combination of this assumed population distribution and the likelihood that defines what best means. And in this case, we're going to define a line using the intercept beta subscript 0. I will often read that as beta naught plus beta subscript 1, I will often read that as beta 1, times x. So we're going to get a line, just like we've seen before, but statisticians insist on using the Greek letters betas for the um, coefficients, beta naught and beta 1, for the uh, linear models. So here, this line beta naught plus beta 1 times x is going to be the line that minimizes, and then here's another term you might see and we'll explain in just a little bit, the sum of squared residuals. So this video will first show us what the likelihood is going to be all about uh, for the most commonly assumed population distribution. We'll look at the line in terms of the likelihood and in terms of this uh, phrase sum of squared residuals so that we can get an understanding of what that phrase means. And then we'll do an example in R where I'll show us how to basically recreate this plot we have on the top right using ggplot. And the plot without the line through the data is just called a scatter plot. So we will, in R, figure out how to make a scatter plot, figure out how to put a line through that scatter plot. We'll figure out how to fit simple linear regression in R and then we'll look at some coefficients in context of a data set and um, make interpretations of those coefficients. So we're going to start much like we've started before in this class. We're going to assume we have some data. But now, because we are looking at two numerical variables, we're actually going to assume we have capital N pairs of x and y variables, and we will continue to assume that these data are iid, and because of the central limit theorem, it doesn't hurt to just assume normality right up front. Now before I fill in the rest of that statement, let's just have our simple linear regression line on this page so we can understand what I'm saying as we go through this notation. So we're going to assume we have a line like this that is specified by an intercept plus, that's a terrible beta, some slope on x. So if we're assuming normality, what we're actually going to assume is there is a mean mu that depends on where we are along the x-axis, maybe here at the fifth observation of the variable x, the line is going to predict for us some value of y. And because it's a prediction, we'll call it y hat. But if we had a different value along the x-axis, we would predict at a different value y hat. 
Hence, I'm going to start indexing the mean by a subscript n, where the mean itself with that subscript n on it is equal to whatever our line from the nth observation of x predicts. So it's a little weird to have two different notations here because mu on the one hand is thought of the mean of the normal distribution that we're assuming, and y hat, which is really going to be like the same value in this case, is just the extra notation we use when we're saying we're actually making a prediction for the value on the y-axis. So here we go, we've got these capital N pairs of observations where we are assuming the data are independent and identically distributed, normal, with a mean mu that is actually defined by a line dependent on a specific value x from the x-axis. Now, that's not all there is to this model because the normal distribution has a mean mu and a variance sigma squared. Now the variance here comes into play when you remember that not all the observations are going to fit on the line. There is some noise to the data about the line and that's what the sigma squared term, the variance of this distribution, is going to capture. Okay, so like we said before, best here is defined in terms of the likelihood. So, and maybe as a challenge to yourself, you could practice setting up the simplified log likelihood, but in this case, your simplified log likelihood should be in terms of the two parameters, the intercept and the slope conditioned on both the x and y numeric variables. Now here's the challenge is you should be able to get down to the following form if you simplify sufficiently. Let's try that a little bit better. This is the form of the simplified log likelihood. And that phrase, sum of squared residuals, comes about from this term because we are literally taking the sum of squared, you can see the squared above, and then let me go about explaining residuals. You can see we are summing squared and then the stuff inside the squared term are named residuals. And let's see if we can use some fancy colors here to help explain this. I'm going to draw an observation just above x5. I'm going to make it large and red so we can see it a little bit better. It doesn't really fit with the rest of the data, but I don't care right now. That's not really my point. From this predicted, this observed value of y, say y5, because it was observed according to the uh, fifth observation associated with x sub 5. The difference here from y hat to y5 is a residual in R, and uh, not in R, named R. And often we just subscript this as like the fifth residual because that is the residual associated with the fifth observation. So when you see the stuff back down here in the equation, uh, inside the squared term, what we're actually doing is defining that difference to be a residual. Hence, we have the sum of the squared residuals, and that's where the phrase comes from. Now, if you were to put all of this into Optin, and you certainly could as long as you account for two parameters at once, which takes a little delicacy but isn't too bad, the estimated values of these population parameters would be the values that maximize the argument of the simplified log likelihood. Now I'm just going to draw everything as vectors here. But you should be able to generally get an idea of that. The value of the line is defined by the two coefficients, beta naught and beta 1, that minimize the um, sum of squared residuals. And remember here, if you're maximizing the negative, if you just drop the negative like you would to use optim, you're going to minimize everything without that negative 
so you would minimize the sum of squared residuals. Now in this context, beta naught hat is the estimated intercept. This would be the value y hat, the predicted value for whatever your y variable is, the value y hat takes on when, because it's the intercept, x is equal to 0. And similarly, beta hat 1 is the estimated slope. Um, nope, I want the word there. Slope gets interpreted just like we would imagine it to, but we got to be careful in the context of the data. So we say for every one unit increase in x, we expect y hat, it's only in expectation, it's not going to happen for each individual observation, we expect y hat to increase by beta hat 1. And that is just a very abstract standard interpretation of the slope. Now we could say we expect y hat to increase by beta 1, and that would make sense even if beta 1 was negative. Or you could just say we expect y hat to decrease by and then take the absolute value of uh, beta 1 in case it's negative. So what we're going to go through and do in R is make a plot without the residuals obviously displayed. Uh, very similar to what we have in this top right corner, we'll make a scatter plot. And then we will add a layer to that scatter plot so that we can see the line going through the data. And once we have something visual to look at, we will then go about using R's built-in functions to fit this model, that is to estimate the coefficients beta naught and beta 1, and then we will interpret them. So like we've done before, I'm going to load the library ggplot2, and I'm going to continue to use this donkeys data set because I think it makes for really easy interpretation, so I'll just load that next. And then let's just immediately dive into making a plot. We will use as our x-axis variable girth, and we're going to try to figure out how well girth explains height. And to make a scatter plot, you'll just use the geom point geometry. And there is a really nice scatter plot because uh, for the simple linear regression model, we should reasonably have linear data. You don't want to try to fit a line through curved data. And in this example here, this is a great example of uh, linear data. So because I know that in advance we're going to need to interpret the coefficients in context of the data. That means relative to the units and variables of the data. I'm just going to add X special labels here that display the units of the variables we're looking at. So both girth and height are measured in centimeters in this case. Okay, so that for a ggplot plot wasn't bad. In order to put a straight line through this, we're going to use the layer stat underscore smooth. We're going to specify a method equal to LM, that stands for linear model. We'll specify a formula, which looks a little funky at first, but by the end of the semester, you're going to get used to it because it is going to show up repeatedly. The formula reads as explain why in this case, height, using or by the variable girth. Okay, we will say that again later on in this video. And for now, we will just specify SE equal to false. If we add on that layer, we get a very nice blue line fit through these seemingly linear data. So that was making our plot as desired. We're next going to use the function 
LM, which is same from the method above, it stands for linear model, where we are going to try to predict girth, nope, height, the y-axis variable by, that is a tilde, that's shift button to the left of one, by girth. We are going to try to explain height using the numerical variable girth. Now be careful here, this always goes y tilde x, even though ggplot always goes x comma y. You gotta be careful with that as we go through uh, modeling in this class. The function ln takes another argument named data, and we'll just pass in our data frame that has the variables height and girth in it. I like to call these fitted linear models uh, fit, because that just kind of makes sense to me. You can see it's a really quick procedure to do in R. In fact, it's doing something like Optim behind the scenes for us. And we are mostly interested in the coefficients of our object fit. So if you just call the function coif on your object fit, you will see we have the estimated intercept to be 52.9 and the estimated slope to be 0.4, let's call it 2. So in fact, those are really easy to interpret in the context of this data. Let's just go ahead and do it. Interpretation of intercept would look like um, when girth is 0 centimeters, we expect a donkey to have height of, let's just round, 53 centimeters. Now my question to you is, does that make sense? If a donkey had a girth that is like a measurement of the circumference of their chest of zero, do you expect a donkey to even exist, let alone have a height? Interpretations of intercepts do not always make sense. And yet, I am going to routinely ask you to interpret intercepts in context of data. So what I'm going to start doing later on in homework assignments is asking you to A, properly interpret intercepts, and then B, tell me whether or not they have physical meaning. And in this case, I'm going to argue that you can't have donkeys with a chest circum circumference of zero. So this does not make sense. So let's move on next to an interpretation of the slope. We would say for every one centimeter increase in girth, we expect height to increase by 0.42 centimeters. And now remember, that is a statement about the average donkey who, whose girth increases by one centimeter. This is not a statement about any particular donkey. This is a statement about the average donkey who theoretically grows one centimeter in girth. We expect such an average donkey's height to increase by 0.42 centimeters. This was our quick introduction to simple linear regression, where we both plotted the model that we then fit and interpreted. If you would like a challenge to move on from here, because this seems like some fun stuff you want to practice with, I'd recommend using the dplyr function filter to remove this suspected outlier. See if you can modify the data set to remove this suspected outlier, and then repeat the analysis we just went through. Sometimes people call this sort of uh, analysis where you fit your model to all of the data and then fit your model to just the data set with the suspected outliers removed. Sometimes people call this a sensitivity analysis. And it can basically tell you by looking at the change 
in the intercept and slope based on the removal of suspected outliers, it can tell you the influence those suspected outliers have on your overall model.